OMG, you guys, y'all are literally obsessed with styes. You guys love them. You comment on them, you ask tons of questions. And of course, most importantly, these are the videos you watch on my channel, almost religiously. And I love you, so I keep delivering, but like these style videos have got to come to a close. I am over it. <laughs> There's gonna be a whole playlist of like a hundred style videos. They're so, so, so common. And that's why people are on here searching for solutions for it. So you are in the right place. I'm gonna help you understand what it is. I know it's uncomfortable. I know it's occurring at the most inopportune time. You're probably getting married in a day or two. You probably have a big talk to give. So you found the right video. We're gonna go exactly into what is it, what it's not, what are some common causes, and what the heck to do with it. And we're gonna get rid of that sty quickly. And if we don't, we're gonna go see an eye doctor, which you probably should go see an eye doctor anyway. I'm just an eye doctor on the internet, but we're gonna go over it anyway. So it's like Groundhog Day. Have you guys seen that movie? Here we go again. Let's try styes one more time. All right, welcome back to iSchool with me. I'm Dr. D. I have a private practice in North Carolina where um, I see all kinds of patients and have a specialty dry eye clinic as well. But I also have this YouTube channel where I teach you about products and treatments related to dry eye syndrome and eye beauty specifically to try to help you have healthy, beautiful, be beautiful comfortable eyes. So if you like today's video, um, if you're not sick of styes yet, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. All right, so what's a sty? Why does it occur? A sty is the common term for what we call a hordeolum. It's painful. It's a red bump that's on your eyelid edge. It may also be down deeper into the gland as well. So it's kind of like an acne pimple. A sty will form when a tiny oil gland near the eyelashes becomes blocked and gets in infected. So they are bacterial infections that cause the gland to swell and you to get inflammatory debris down in that gland. Now they can be very painful, but they're incredibly common. They can happen because you touch something dirty and touched your face. They can happen because you have some meibomian gland dysfunction already going on and some excessive bacteria on your lid margin. There's a lot of different reasons, but it's here now, so let's take care of it. Now, sometimes you have to have an eye care provider take care of it. And I will say from years of treating styes, the quicker you get on top of it, the better. If you let that thing get bigger and bigger and bigger, it is harder to get rid of that inflammatory debris. So if there is an eye doctor in your area with an opening, definitely consider seeing them so they can get it gone very, very quickly. But if you're in the early stages of your sty, you may be able to get rid of it yourself. Now, a sty is also similar to another type of eyelid bump called a chalazion. A chalazion is a bump that's usually further down in the gland, like further back on your eyelid. And unlike a sty, a chalazion is not painful and it's not usually infected. And actually a chalazion can happen after the sty. So if the redness and pain goes away, but the bump does not, then that's a chalazion. We do treat both conditions in a similar fashion, so we can easily kind of go over that in just a little bit. Styes are very common. They occur in literally everybody, old and young, black and white, male and female. They can be more common in adults than children, simply because we tend to have thicker oil in our glands than child, because we've already had more blockage starting. You can see my videos about my bombing gland dysfunction to learn more about that. But it can also be common in certain conditions, like if you have blepharitis, which is dead skin cells that accumulate on your eyelashes, rosacea, diabetes, or if you have high cholesterol, you're more likely to develop a sty. So in a lot of cases, they'll go away on their own, but that's not why you're here. You're here because you want that thing gone right now, yesterday. All right, so I bet your first question for me is, what's a sty filled with and can I pop this thing? Well, they're pretty much filled with pus or inflammatory debris and inflammatory tissue. Do not rub them, do not squeeze them, do not do that because you can cause the infection to spread. If the sty pops on its own, fine. If it comes out on its own, just cleanse the area. But if you try to sort of stab the area, pop the area, you can cause a wound or injury to the eyelid and have a bigger skin infection going on. Even a preceptal cellulitis that can move into a cellulitis, which is infection behind the eye. So we don't want to do that. The first thing you're going to do instead is grab a hot, 
compress. So my best hot compresses are, I really love the Bruder mask. I really love the Hydrate brand mask, the Mediviz uh, mask is wonderful and hot compresses early and often are the key. Now, if you can't get a hot compress, can you use the potato salad approach? What the heck is that? I used to say before all these commercially available medical grade hot compresses were available that you could boil a potato or you could boil an egg. While those things are effective, still the best is if you can get a medical grade compress in order to get heat on that sty early and often. My next tip after hot compresses is lid cleansers. So I do this for all of my patients with styes. You can use tea tree oil lid wipes like Optase makes, the folks at Hydrate make them, the Ocusoft light blue that are available at most pharmacies, Hyla wipe makes a tea tree wipe, I believe. And then you can also cleanse the lid with other things like zest, which is an okra-based polysaccharide, or even hypochlorous acid spray. I love hypochlorous acid spray. You can do Avanova. You can make your own hypochlorous and alter the concentration with the new Thea MD device. And hypochlorous is going to just really cut back viral load, bacterial load, and help cleanse that lid margin. Your sty likely occurred because of an excess of bacteria on the lid margin. Now that may have occurred because you touched your eyelid with either your fingers or makeup that had bacteria on it, or it could have happened because of an overpopulation on the lid margin itself. Either way, it's very helpful to cleanse the lid margin with these cleansers that take care of bacteria. Okay, so hot compresses and lid wipes are about the extent of what you can do at home. The next phase of sty treatment is to see a doctor. So doctor intervention option number one would be antibiotics. So your doctor might use oral antibiotics if they feel that your sty has spread along the lid margin turning into a preceptal cellulitis, or they can use topical antibiotics. A couple of things we sometimes use, azacite, Vigamox, moxifloxacin, the erythromycin, tobramycin type of antibiotics. So it could be a number of different things, but an, a topical and or oral antibiotic could be used. The second doctor intervention you might see is a steroid. So a doctor might use an injected steroid. We can sometimes do a Kenalog injection right into the area to try to reduce that inflammatory material or a topical steroid. Option number three, and these are newer doctor interventions that not everybody's going to offer, but your doctor might offer you IPL or low level light therapy or another dry eye interventional option approach. So I use IPL on styes really, really successfully. I have posted about this before. If you can't treat the sty at home, then the next step might be to see a doctor for antibiotics and or steroids. If your doctor offers you interventional treatments, I have had great success in my clinic treating acute styes and getting them gone incredibly quickly with IPL or intense pulse light as well as low level light therapy or LED light. Intense pulse light in particular is extremely effective at breaking these oils up, reducing bacteria on the lid and reducing the inflammation. I've regularly used IPL in my clinic to get rid of styes or hordeolums and it's very effective in getting rid of the sty within about one to two treatments. So if your wedding is on Saturday and you're watching this on a Wednesday, you might wanna um, drive to Salisbury, North Carolina. No, you might wanna find a doctor who does IPL for styes because it does get rid of them very, very quickly. Even if you have an old chalazian, a big old bump in your eyelid, I have had some success with getting those a lot, lot smaller by using IPL. So talk to your doctor about that as well. Now chalazians, if, especially if they're there a long time, might need medical intervention. So you may have to have it injected with a steroid. It may not respond to those do-it-yourself methods that we've been talking about in this video. And you could try IPL first, but ultimately a lot of chalazia end up up needing surgery. In other words, a doctor flipping your eyelid and cutting that oil out of there. Although as a dry eye specialist, my two cents is that if you can avoid surgery on your lids and your meibomian glands, please do so because I find in patients who've had many, many styes that surgery can do damage to the surrounding meibomian glands as well. And so we really want to avoid surgery if possible, but if you have to have surgery done to get your chalazion removed, I would recommend looking for an oculoplastic surgeon since they work on the eyelids so regularly. 
In my clinical experience, early care is key. In all my years of treating styes, one thing I can tell you is that the quicker you get on it and get it gone, the better patients do overall. If you wait and wait and let it get bigger, it gets harder to get rid of that inflammatory material. So get those hot compresses going right away, get the lid care going right away, and get yourself into a doctor as soon as you can. So I hope that this was informational and helpful in terms of treating your own hordeolums and styes at home. I know if it were me, obviously I would start with the treatment I described at home but then I would get myself into my clinic as soon as possible and do IPL and sit under my low-level light therapy device so take that as you will now that you know what a sty is and what causes it you are equipped to sort of start treating it yourself but don't forget your doctor um, if you need them. Let me know down below how these tips worked for you. Have you tried IPL for a sty or your long-standing chalasia? What are your thoughts on styes? And also, last sty video. I'm done. No more Groundhog Day. We're done here. No more sty videos. So I hope you like this one. You can leave me comments to make more sty videos, but I think I'm done. This is so many. <laughs> I've done it a million times. That's it for today's lesson. Class is dismissed. I'll see you next time.